knowledge. Push that! It appears, sire, that you have come across Wang Xi 207. And he gives tips on getting higher education while creating videos and avoiding student death. I've got it, it's got good. I'm going to fund a college and educate those monsters on better ways to cover that your carpet. I don't think that's the best plan, ADD. Too late, we need to hurry. Uh, right away, ADD. Coursework, financial aid, followers, copyright strikes, and more. You are listening to the life of a content creating college student podcast starring Wayne Z0207 and Charlotte Waite. Good evening, folks. My name is Colton W. Hurst, also known as Wayne Z0207 on the internet. I'm your host for this podcast. However, due to things that came up personally, you know, personally with Charlotte, in her perspective, she was on the and so I'm going to be solo hosting, but I'm not alone. Today I've got the direct, the new student programs director, so he's smiley with me. Say hello. Hello. So, how, how are you doing today, Zoe? I'm pretty good. It's Friday. Oh, Friday. yes. Oh, yes. I had imagined so. And from what I've heard, you've done a little bit of content creation for OIT in the past. Oh, yes. So, would you mind telling me what the new student programs director does, per se? lot of our um, new student initiatives that happen on campus, so anything from our orientation experience down to our weeks of welcome, and anything that helps integrate our first year students. Oh yes, and I do remember you from white school and SOAR orientation. What, what were your first impressions? Of you? Yes. Yes, um, you are a very energetic, outgoing student, mm-hmm. and you have a so I figured first come, first serve, like you are going to be a very involved student. Good student. Yes, and I have proven that already numerous times. Numerous, numerous times. And even though I am struggling a little bit to keep my grades up at A's, I'm still sitting pretty. Yes, you are. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of hard to balance both content creation and being a college student, but I do it with a smile. So, as our guest for today, would you mind doing the honors of asking the questions this time around, since our, our co-host is here? Yes. Okay, yeah, so what are two things that went well this week? So, in my math class, we learned about the line of best fit. I was beginning to fall asleep because the lesson wasn't so easy, it was so easy until an idea struck me. It was an idea that would help this podcast. I determined that every 10 episodes, I'll create a line of best fit to determine which direction my podcast will be headed over the next few days. This is designed to help me set more real, realistic expectations and determine what steps to take to reach that goal. Have you ever used a line of best fit? I have not. Yeah, you, you definitely should. I mean, like, the students submit their data too, you know. Right. And so I figure that using the line of best fit would help you better determine which direction the new program can go. Totally. And it's probably, um, we could probably do use it in some sense with our program evaluation. So what it looks like for us to assess our programs and then going off of what works well for the year and using that in our coming years. Mm-hmm. Of course. Needless to say, I've had a pretty good integration into Oregon Tech, needless to say. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, like those programs, that those were so fun. Great. That's a point of Mm-hmm. What would you say was the best moment that the students enjoyed? I think our students enjoyed the opportunity to not only meet faculty and staff, but really build that community between uh, their Oregon Tech community and then their other students that are going to be growing So their mm-hmm. current students that are already here and then what it looks like to be a new student on mm-hmm. the campus. Right. Mm-hmm. I really like the fun activities that we got together and did. Yeah. Dodgeball, I, I was a sniper back there. Yeah. Back in my middle school days, and high school days sometimes, I was a sniper. If you were off guard for even one second, bam, you were out. Right, you were really good at throwing those dodgeballs. Yeah, albeit I had to be careful as I got into the higher schools, right, right. such as high school and college. Yeah, I think you even got to be captain a couple of times when you got your team, right? Oh, yes, yeah. I did. I, I do believe you. I remember that quite well. I have a memory just like my mom's, believe it or not. There were some memories that I don't wish to remember, and yet some that I'm grateful that I do remember. 
it's, 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 it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. I'm not sure if any of my fans have experienced this. Isn't there a term for that that kind of memory? There probably is. I'm trying to think. Currently, but um, probably repressing memories that you probably don't want to remember. But it's okay. Right. Things but I'm, I'm 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 referring to what what when students or an individual remembers a whole bunch. Oh, just um, in general. Well, I don't know. Hmm. Me neither. I, I think it might be photogenic. I mean, oh. Some some memories can, can be picture perfect. Oh, a photographic. Memory. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could very well have that. And in a shocking turn of events, I have already finished one of the projects for MFP 103. Great. I created a structure using stick welding. Stick welding. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So your welding class is going great. Yes, much, much better. I created four surface welds, a fused weld, a properly known as a butt weld, a lap weld, and the infamous T weld. Ooh, great. Do you ever had to pull off one of those? Um, I think I had to do a T welding in high school, but we did a lot of thick welding and whatnot. Uh -huh, right. Uh, could you move up to the microphone? Yes. Just a little bit more. Like, there's the front. I don't know if the audience can see this, but yeah, they probably can. But <laughs> the microphone that I use, there's a part where you're you're actually supposed to speak into. That's the part that's directly receiving the voice, and I can visibly see that because of the echo and the volume knobs. Oh, nice. Yeah. We can do better and talk to the mic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I I am truly making progress in my class. I just need to finish, finish off oxyacetylene, TIG, and MIG. Okay. Once that's done, it's an easy A in the course. What's the difference between TIG and MIG? TIG is using tungsten inert gas, while MIG is more of a wire fee. Okay. I've, I've already had to look into it earlier since. There were two assignments on that that was due a week before we even delve into actual working with the MIG. Okay, awesome. And so I had to finish those up. Yeah. So what is one set setback that you've come oh, across? There's, this there's week? actually a follow-up oh, question. Oh wait. So how did things help? How did these things help you grow? And what did you gain out of it? After what I've done, I have earned more welding experience, and I can track my goals in this podcast even more so. Through the line of best fit, I can track my progress over time and identify any areas I need to improve on. This allows me to constantly assess my progress and make changes where necessary to reach my desired goal. This process will be known as best fitting. Okay. Additionally, I have gained more insight into welding practice by more, working with more experienced welders, such as Jim. Awesome. He, from what I've heard, he's a pretty good welding instructor. That's Certif great. A certified pipe welder, too. Oh, awesome. We, we don't have too many of those here in Oregon, do we? I don't think so. Yeah. Like how many how many are certified engineers? Ooh, how many I, faculty? I do not know that answer. <laughs> oh my goodness. Don't don't worry about that. Like only natural. Yeah. And so he was to say, this is helping further refine my skills and make me a better welder. Perfect. Alright, so what is one setback that you've come across this week? That is a good good question. In my chemistry lab, we worked with titrations, which I will delve further into in our next question. The titrations took such a long time. We did not have time to repeat the experiments. Our group wasn't that insightful as to how the titration was supposed to work. Plus, it was a Monday. It was only natural our minds would be a little off during the lab. However, I managed to answer the questions to the best of my ability and overcome that challenge. I think some of the students, they, their, their labs took a long time. A any notable examples? Um, I think about, ooh, I remember when I did titrations in my chemistry lab and mm -hmm. we worked with like the color changings and yes. so like we, it was like a pink color and if you got it off, it, yeah. the color was very far off. So yeah. I can understand not being mm -hmm. able or right. really understanding that process because right. I had to deal with it as mm -hmm. well. So you worked with phenothalin. Yes. Yes. I, I remember that quite, quite well. And needless to say... There is one thing I could take away from this. Yeah, so what is the one thing that you can take away, and what is one thing that you can prove upon? Even when we feel like our minds are not fully engaged, we can still do our most productive work. By the way, it was a Monday. Yeah. Uh, I probably explained that. Yeah. E even though we are not engaged, one thing that could be taken away is that it's critical to be prepared for any situation. Right. 
even if it's not ideal. Right. One thing to improve upon is to focus on the task at hand, stay engaged as possible, especially when it's challenging. Yes. From what I've heard, most students and individuals have Monday as their tough day. Right. Because it's the start of the week and you're coming back from the weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel that way. And I remember when we took our tour that there were plenty of coffee shops around the campus. Yes. Would you mind uh, explaining what those coffee shops are? Yeah, there's the Bistro on campus. There's another uh, coffee shop located inside of Irvine. And then we have the Falls, which is located inside the CBD. Oh, yes. I think I've found myself at Duffy's more frequently. Duffy's, that's what it's called inside Irvine. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Marie, Marie there is so nice. Good. Like she, she, she had to ask for reminders to help memorize my order, but I'm, I'm usually straightforward, so. That's she, nice. It didn't take her that long to catch up quick. So she has your order memorized? Yes. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, once you become familiar around the campus, right. people kind of know what your whole shtick is. Right. That's great. Mm-hmm. And so it becomes a recurring theme amongst students, per se. And over time, the students get adjusted to the campus, get adjusted to the work environment, and they go on to do great, great things. Right. Much like I have already. Yes. Mm-hmm. What was one of the most notable new students that you met? Ooh, I've got a couple. Um, I think a lot of them fall into uh, students who attended flight school. So mm-hmm. I'm going to say you are one of them because I have the same colored class ring as you. Ooh. Um, so I also have Peridot on my class ring from high school. And then I think of Ken and mm-hmm. Thomas. Uh, they're both very involved on campus and they're kind of older, non-traditional students. Mm-hmm. And um, they're always willing to pop into my office and check on me kind of like mm-hmm. you do. Yes. And so, like, that's really nice and very impactful for my job mm-hmm. and being here. Of course. The, the Oregon Tech community is just so, so supportive. Right. Students and faculty all care about one another. Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. And it's quite a strong community that we've got here. What does that, you know, what does that mean to you as a faculty member? Um, I think what it means to me is I, um, I have an environment that I enjoy coming to every day. So my work is never the same any day that I come in. And so what it's like to really have um, the autonomy to create programs that I enjoy, but also impact student lives and the university uh, culture uh, in a positive way that helps you all as students be as successful as you can be while you're here. Yes, and you've done such a great job at that role, Zoe. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what did you do as a college student this week? In Chemistry 204, we studied titrations. We delved deeper into the concentration of H plus and OH negative ions in acids and bases in titrations. We could draw the molecules as the titration progressed. We fitted the data and observed how the solution changed over time. When the pH of the solution changed to 7.00, the solution neutralized at the equivalence point, turning pink. In MFG 103, we continued with stick welding, as I stated earlier. I also took the liberty of working a little bit more on TIG welding, since I still had quite a way to go. I pulled off four surface welds after learning to work the foot pedal. I was able to add some decent material, but it's not flawless. Far from this, for that matter. What matters is the effort you put into the project and the terms of overall grade. I think what part of what's throwing me off here is that I'm util- trying to utilize the foot pedal to keep the metal warm, all while not injuring myself. So that can be a kind of a bit of a drag, but Dad told me he had something with a torch, something more simple. Right. All you do is just plug in and go. Right. I imagine some students have that difficulty too. Right. It's almost like uh, playing the drums. You have to know what your hands are doing and your feet are doing in order to make sense. Right. But sometimes that's confusing. So, yeah. I understand. What, what if, you, if you ever use the take well before, what, what is your favorite process? The foot or the trigger? Uh, we've always used the trigger, so we didn't have to do the foot at all. We were pretty lucky in having access to the one that Right, didn't have the foot pedal. Hey! Yeah. Now that's what I'm talking about. In, in speech 111, we continue formatting our formative speech. I interviewed Professor Yu Hai Yang when I attended the flight school events. I remember him so very well. We, we've, already, we, we've, all, we've already formed a relationship with four. 
so well, while we're on the subject of flight school, would you mind explaining, summarizing what happened during flight school? Yeah, so flight school was an opportunity for students to come and gain a small academic edge by uh, uh, moving into the university environment a week early before classes started and then taking some smaller course opportunities to learn some academic skills. Yes, of course, and there were three seminars, correct? Yes. What were they? They were uh, science, and then we had a math portion, and then we had a writing. And I think the math one, the first part of it, yeah, that got to me. Oh, yeah. Just having to count all the bricks. Yes, I heard that you guys had to count the bricks on one of the sides of the building. Uh, yeah. Kind of gets a little bit repetitive and annoying. But... That's Part, I think part of it was there was a very disruptive instructions. Right. Which I have encountered that problem once here all day. Right. The instructions were a little bit vague in my welding class. Right. And because that was the first time we had done that program, we're hoping to build and expand on it for our next coming years. Of course. I delved into how our decisions affected the formation of alternate universes and timelines. Sure enough, our decisions do affect the, on how our timelines are formed. From the research I conducted, I learned more about how alternate timelines are created and through our decisions, the effects of those decisions on other universes. However, Professor Yang did say that he, he wouldn't consider the multiverse theory a theory, but rather uh, an untested hypothesis. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, considering that we don't have the technology to test that. Right. But, we, but there is a possibility there is a multiverse. Totally possible. Mm-hmm. This knowledge has helped me to better understand the topics I am in speech 111 and to better craft my informative speech. All of us can utilize this concept, even you. So please remember that in an alternate timeline, there is a better decision or a better series of decisions than me. So make an effort to make the most of what you are given. I, I think students can take a lot away from Don't don't worry about it. I mean, I I I've even had to eat on stream once or twice too. Need some caffeine. Yeah, yeah, I I get the feeling. Okay. So, what can you do to enhance your studies based on your experience? Well, reflecting on our decisions and experiences can help us develop our future better future strategies. This can include setting goals, creating plans, developing better habits so we can make the most of our studies and future goals. When we reflect on our experiences, we can identify what went wrong and what went right, and use this to devise better plans for the future. We can also learn from our mistakes, and use this knowledge to inform our decisions and to make choices. The way Yu Hai Yang, the professor here, described it, the multiverse theory, it, it, encourages, it, it encourages us to think in a more scientific manner. Right. What happened? What went well? What can we do to improve? Right, kind of the like a SWOT analysis: strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, mm -hmm. threats. Yes, of course. And I guess while we're on the subject of caffeine here, I kind of I, I have myself a mocha on, on the days that I stop by the coffee shop. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like a mocha frap, or uh, like what, what, is it a coffee? Like yeah. a hot coffee? Yeah, hot coffee. Okay. What I, what I usually get is one shot of espresso, chocolate milk, vanilla flavoring, one or two ice cubes to cool it down, and then some whipped cream. Yeah, that's a good order. Yeah. Lately, Doofy's has been running out of whipped cream. And so I'm, I'm waiting on that, but yeah. they, they can take as much time as they need. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm not that impatient. I mean, like, I do need some action here and there, but... Right. I mean, like, I, I can wait. So what did you do as a content creator this week? I would like to point out that from earlier, I didn't lie. We will do the best fitting. Based on the st statistics from the past 10 episodes, we will project what direction this show will take in the next 10 episodes, etc. Using the past 10 episodes as a benchmark, we can analyze the data to determine which direction the show will likely take in the future. This includes looking at viewership numbers, topics that have been covered, feedback from listeners, and other relevant factors. We could then use this analysis to make informed predictions about future episodes 
and decide on the most appropriate course of action. By using this data and analysis, we can effectively plan for a show's future. We can also ensure that we are delivering content that meets the expectations of you, the audience. My co-host Charlotte and I want to provide the most engaging experience for you when it comes to informational and entertaining content. To do this, Charlotte and I strive to ensure each episode is full of informative and entertaining topics that will keep you engaged and coming back for more. So consider this as a little bit of an update. So what can you do to enhance your content based on your experience? As podcast creators, we can always be looking for ways to in- innovate and stay ahead of the curve. That might include incorporating different types of media into our episodes, such as interviews, audio clips, or even visual elements. We could also look at ways to make the content more interactive by encouraging our listeners to join in the discussions. We can also use our experience to improve the way we present our topics, such as finding ways to make them more relatable. I can even insert other media, too, I've just realized. Like, for example, I can insert clips from my previous streams or previous content, which episode 11 will be a great opportunity to do that. I'm not going to explain why, but I can I can give you a hint when the episode is over, per se. Needless to say, it's going to be quite a nostalgia rush. I mean, it's a nostalgia rush right now. I mean, this episode's pretty special already, but episode 11 will be even more special. I believe it. Mm-hmm. Quite a nostalgic feeling. I mean, some new students have nostalgia from back when they were new students, per se. And so, have you encountered someone like that before? Yeah, I think of um, some new students that I had my first year I was here and how they reflect on their experience of the program that I put on during that year. But I also mm-hmm. think about um, students I got to teach in my course last year. So, how mm. they've come to me and have gotten into programs that they've applied for students who may have left the university are trying to keep in contact so that I get to follow them and continue their journey uh, mm-hmm. through life. So, yeah, it's a, it's amazing to get to watch you guys uh, flourish in the university. Of course. And four years from now, when I graduate, are you, are you going to miss me? Yes, I'm going to miss you. Both oh, time. yes. I, I totally believe that. <laughs> and, and by then, I'll have plenty of experience. Yes, you'll be set and ready to go out into the world. Yes. But of course, I won't be done quite just yet. I'll right. still have my master's degree and right. PhD. Yep. I mean, I've got a whole journey ahead of me. Yeah, you're going to do great. Mm-hmm. I mean, my my journey as a content creator and a student, and my quest to become the inspirational folklore figure that I aspire to be. Right. Some of you may have heard, heard it already. I'm not going to spoil it for those who don't. But that that is far from. There's a whole bunch more that I have yet to experience. Any any idea on what I'll be experiencing in the future years? Um, I think you're going to experience a lot of opportunities to grow. Mm-hmm. And I think you're going to have um, a lot of choices about what you get to do with your future. So mm-hmm. um, you're going to meet a lot of great people and a lot of mm-hmm. faculty and staff that are going right. to be excited to see you continue your journey. Mm-hmm. And I think you're going to do great things. Mm-hmm. And so the staff here at Oregon Tech especially proud to have you here. Of course, I believe that 100%. And wait, we're going to head off into our uh, last question. Yeah, so what college events or club meetings did you attend this week? This is not a college event, but rather a community event. I went to church at Refuge City Church on Sunday, just like the weekend before. We had a grand time. We learned more about covenants and how we can be game changers in certain circumstances. It was a great opportunity to meet with people from all walks of life and learn how to apply the different principles of faith in our daily lives. It was an interactive experience that allowed us to discuss and debate this different perspectives, find ways to work together to positively impact our communities. I mean, not too many people get out and involved in the climate of community, per se. Right. I mean, I think it's because most some of the students at Oregon Tech didn't originate from Klamath, per se. That's true. We do have a, a large population of students who, you're right, come from other uh, counties and cities from not only Oregon, but Washington, Nevada. Mm-hmm. I would agree. Mm-hmm. I, I've been in Canada a few international students, too. 
Yes, we do have a rather large uh, international student population. Spans quite a few countries across the world. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think I am pretty unique in, in a sort of sense. I mean, I, I've, I've been a native. I'm, I've lived here in Klamath my whole life. Right. And let me think. As I mentioned in an earlier episode, I'm one of the many neurodivergent content creating college students here. Right. And what I'm doing is so unique. I, mean, like, I don't think we've had a student here that's done something like this. I don't think so either. And I think it's a great opportunity to see how other students who might identify with um, that there are no bounds to what they can mm -hmm. do. And so right. you're truly uh, you're the, the uh, what's it called, inaugural student. Mm -hmm. sure. Of course. Of course. Okay, so on a scale of 1 to 10, how well did this help you get involved with the Oregon Tech and the Taylor Falls community and why? I'd say a 9. This helped me get involved with the Oregon Tech and Cloud community by connecting me with local organizations and events. I was able to meet new people and learn more about the area. This helped me keep in touch with the world around me. I stayed connected with my society and cleansed my body of any stress and worries. I don't know what religion you are from, but remember that there is a plan for all of us. More, moreover, this experience allowed me to gain a greater appreciation for the diversity of local culture and to understand the beauty of living in a great outlet oh yes it, it definitely definitely is and i guess since we still have a little bit of time before the klaxon horn goes off would you mind explaining some more of the best moments of flight school yeah i think about um how we got to work as a staff with different students i really did enjoy the opportunity to play dodgeball and the soccer um what was it bubble soccer so mm -hmm. inflating those bubbles and then seeing you guys run into each other and mm. um really fling each other across the field mm -hmm. was exciting i think i think i got knocked over once or twice i think you did too and i also think some other students had an opportunity to go for some people that they might have had a grudge against um but i also think about the opportunity i got to have to work with different professional staff mm -hmm. so claire right. and charlotte were awesome to work with the opportunities to work with different partners from our mm -hmm. Right. And of course, from my experience in dodgeball, I didn't have necessarily the best start, per se. Right. Yeah. I would be given too much information if I described what happened in the first few games. Yeah, no, it's okay. But you guys had a great time and um, created that community that really mm -hmm. launched all into a great school. Right. And that sort of connectedness is what brought us all together. Right. And that's what got us off to a good start. And here's to my continued success here at Oregon Tech. Nah, I, think I think one of the dodgeballs tried to attack you once or twice. I did. I did get in there a couple times to try to play with you guys. You guys were very rough coming for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was fun. I had to, felt like I was back in high school. Oh, Sorry. yes, definitely. And I think you were in the spectators once and they were still coming after you. Yes, we were behind a desk and y'all launched one. It actually one time hit my computer and launched it off the desk. I had to catch my computer before it hit the ground. So you guys were very vicious in your throat. Oh, so glad you were there to keep us in line. Yes, yes. Glad nothing else was done. Right. More seriously injured for that for matter. Mm -hmm. And needless to say, I have yet to encounter my life. Right. I mean, like, I've, I've encountered all friends so far, but I have yet to encounter a rival in my college days or in my content creating days for that matter. Well, that's good. You don't mm -hmm. need people coming for you. Well, I mean, it, it is kind of getting a bit bland here as of late. I mean, like, I've noticed that my math class has been a little bit easy for me, per se. I mean, like, I think this time I barely scraped by the quiz with an A. Okay. It's barely straight by. 14 out of 22. Yeah. Kind of get got a little bit overconfident there. Yeah, but... you did. <sighs> okay, just reevaluate. Do it again. Yeah, you live, you learn. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, things have gotten pretty easy. I've even had to find more challenging problems to get adequate practice in. That's great. You're taking the time to learn mm -hmm. new skills. Right. You know, I, I, I don't mind having a rival at any point, per se. I don't mind a little bit extra action. Okay. I mean, like, 
as I've stated in the previous, I might have said this in the previous episode. <laughs> Just when things were getting good. good. So I had a bit of a blast in episode 10. On episode 11, for real this time, we're really going to have an old friend appear on here. Someone who's been here since the beginning of my content creating career. Some of you might already know him, but some of you don't. I'm not even going to spoil a surprise. It's a big, big surprise. And believe me, it is, it's going to be quite a nostalgia rush. He's been with me since the past two and a half years I created content. And I think we're going to be approaching three years this year. We're getting close. I've created content since April 7th, 2020. Yeah, we're getting pretty close. Yeah. Uh -huh. I had a great time here, Zoe. Thank you for inviting me, Colton. I of course. Yeah, I wish Charlotte could have been here to see this, but... Maybe next time we'll all get on together. Yeah, may may maybe so. Perhaps we could do a bit, a little bit of a follow-up yeah. in, in future episodes. For sure. So that, that is something that I can also consider. We don't have to have a different guest every time. That's true. So if I find I'm running low on guests, I'll, I'll revisit the old times. Totally. All right. So thank you, folks, so much for tuning in. Remember, there will be disappointments in life. As humans have the power to turn those disappointments into accomplishments. This is Wayne Z0207, a.k.a. Colton W. Hurst, a.k.a. Fourth Wall Breaking, Warman Army. Signing out, folks. Good night, everyone. Bye.